LeBron dropped 50 that served as an appetizer to some bigger feasts. KD dropped 53. Carl Anthony Towns dropped an NBA season high 60. And then Kyrie topped it with 60 the next night. Stan, this is now wait a minute. crazy. How do you top 60 with, with 60? 60? I don't know. I, I, because I, I it looked better. He equaled it, it. it. No, 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 no. Man, he had 41 in the first half. I, I will say it, it did look a little better. better. Cause, cause Not to you, it didn't grow. No, no, no. <laughs> but you know what? When you see guys perform at the level that these guys are performing, even, even the home crowd. That's starts right. cheering for you because you're seeing something special. When, when you see Durant go for 53, now the interesting thing is, even though he got the 50, he was he was probably the least efficient of all these guys that were putting up the big numbers in the last few weeks, which is amazing. You would think the opposite with a guy like Kevin Durant. Well, but but look at Brooklyn. You have one guy go for 53 and another guy go for 60. That had never happened. How, how many back to back? I mean, how many? Like the last time it did happen, have it two guys Kobe Bryant yeah. that can do that yeah but that's the first time in league history that teammates go back to back to score 50 in an NBA game that that is you know I could have I guess seen that maybe with Kobe and Shaq potentially because they were both capable but if you really there aren't many no. teammates that have the capability of doing that. that that speaks to the just sheer ability of these two guys now look at the last thing on your screen there's the minutes 34 minutes from Kyrie Irvin because he came out the last eight minutes and that was the difference between let's say Kobe's 81 as we've had Sam Mitchell sitting here several nights that we brought this up they needed every single bucket that night from Kobe for him to get to that 81 and with Kyrie at 41 at the half they were kind of blowing him out and it's like you know what we don't need you out there anymore. Come sit over yeah, here. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point. But the, the reality is they needed all of it, too, because that's what they won the game in the first half. The difference is that the Lakers didn't win this game until the fourth quarter, which gave Kobe the opportunity to get the, the 81. Whereas if that game had been competitive last night, I think Kyrie would have broken that record potentially because he was in an incredible incredible zone. I guess well, that's the question. Do you think we'll see someone get 81 again? It, it with depends this on the opponent. I mean, <laughs> it depends on the opponent. I know this about sports. Every time you think you're never going to see it again, you might. I mean, we're not going to see 100 again. Right, here we go. We're not going to see no 100. We're not going to see some of the stuff Wilt did, but. I but, think we're going to see 100. But 81, I don't think we'll see 100. I, I think we're going to see it. I really do. I, I just think with the three-point shooting and the way these guys are getting hot, and, and my point about it, it it's going to depend on the opponent. Most of these games, a lot of times they end up in blowouts just like with Kyrie's last night. Whereas if you get a game where a guy's in that kind of a zone and it's a competitive game and now he plays the 38, 39 minutes, I think potentially with the skill set in this league right now, I, I'm just not – I expect somebody definitely to get 80 and I'm not going to be surprised in the next few years if somebody gets 100. Like last night even, they, they could have had 100 at halftime as a team, Brooklyn. They, they shot the ball – so they shot 73%. In the, or 74 in the first half. I mean, and a lot of those are threes. Against a team, as we were saying off camera, Orlando, who since the All-Star break had really been defending well.